Good day, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Bradley Needham from Developmentor, and today we're going to be uh, going over and looking at some basic uh, Swift language constructs and seeing how to get a handle on um, starting programming in Swift. So just so you know, um, at the end of this uh, webcast, I will go ahead and put up any um, type of collateral that I um, uh, generate here uh, on the following uh, GitHub, and I will also copy this into the um, into the chat so that you guys can have, you just don't have to type it in um, over, you can just go ahead and copy and paste from the chat. Uh, again, it won't, there's nothing there right now. It's uh, it's empty, but uh, at the, uh, probably about, I don't know, maybe an, an hour or so after the uh, webcast, uh, we should have some of the collateral up there. Okay, basically um, all the little demos and things that I'm gonna be doing. All right. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's see what we're going to be um, looking at over the next uh, hour here, and uh, what we're going to try to accomplish. So when we talk about Swift, um, Apple Swift language, uh, the first thing I'm going to kind of look at, I'm going to do an overview of the tool set. Right, then we will look at how to work with uh, variables um, of different types. And this is because so if, if some of you are coming from um, programming uh, dynamic languages, uh, uh, the like non-type strict languages, uh, it sometimes is a little bit of a shock to come into a language that has um, this type strictness and uh, where once a variable is declared, it is of a particular type and only of that particular type. So we'll discuss you know, what happens um, with that in Swift. We'll also look at, for those of you coming from type strict languages, uh, looking at uh, compiler inference and then and that kind of looks uh, sometimes makes people uneasy when they're used to really looking at uh, particular strict types and wanting to give them a particular type and specifying that the variable is of a type where the compiler is just going to figure it out for you um, again maintaining that type strictness but being but figuring it out for you so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, then we'll go on and we'll talk about um, how to instantiate arrays and see how we can use arrays, um, basically um, manipulate data, because most of the time, and anytime you're doing any sort of programming, you're gonna have to deal with some collections and arrays are being the base, um, uh, base collection type uh, in uh, Swift. We may discuss a little bit about maps, and probably just um, focus on arrays um, and not uh, discuss maps. Again, this is just kind of the basic um, language constructs as we go through here in Swift. Uh, so then again, we'll also look at loops, because that's kind of important once you have arrays or collections of, uh, of values, you need to be able to loop over them. Um, so we want to be able to look at the different types of loops. Uh, then we'll also look at um, how to um, uh, maybe uh, choose a different code or branch code with an if statement, All right? We'll look at conditional statements with if. Um, and if else and how those work in Swift and kind of the different syntax. I mean, if we've all had if and conditional statements in the different languages we've programmed in, what makes them kind of a little bit different in Swift and what is the syntax for them? Um, and, so, and what might be strange and what might be familiar. And then of course, we'll look at uh, choosing or choose to execute different code with switch. Now with um, Swift, They've really gone, you know, all in with the switch statement and added a lot of uh, functionality with the with the switch statement. So we'll kind of um, discuss the different things that you can do with switch, which are which are pretty fancy. Uh, then we'll also talk. So so again, we're starting with kind of the basics here of Swift. So again, we also have to kind of get into functions, and so we'll talk about you know, how do we define functions and how do we use functions um, in Swift. So we'll see how to invoke and define uh, functions. And then lastly, um, we'll discuss a little bit about, um, hopefully if we get through all this um, to, to the end of this hour, um, we'll look at how to work with optional types. And these are kind of a special type uh, in Swift. Um, again, some other languages have similar constructs, um, but we'll see how um, this works with Swift and how some of the operators um, work uh, on, on, this, on these types of um, variables. 
Okay. All right. So I think that that's what we're going to try to um, cover. Again, I will try to uh, limit the uh, my talking to about 50 minutes, 45, 50 minutes, and then hopefully have some um, time at the end for questions if people have something to um, ask. If you have something to ask during the um, middle of the uh, talk, please you know feel free to go ahead and type it in. I just might not spot it right away, but uh, once I once I get a hold of it and see it, I will um, try to give you an answer to it um, if I can. All right, so let's go ahead and do this the starting point. Let's look at the um, overview of the tool sets with Swift. So I'm going to be talking mainly about, of course, Xcode. Uh, this is uh, development on the Mac, so we're going to be using um, Xcode for doing the development. There's two kinds of um, things that you can do when you're developing um, Swift kind of applications. Uh, one is to actually develop an application that would be doing it with the play, with the project. And the other one is when you're kind of just playing around and getting used to how um, Swift works and, and figuring out um, how to do things, you can use a playground. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing mostly in uh, this lecture is I'll actually um, use Xcode and we'll I'll look uh, briefly at a playground, but mainly at a, um, a project and we'll build kind of an application so we can see where we might have different files. But the other one I wanted to point out to you is um, the REPL, which is the read, evaluate, print loop. Um, type interpreter that also comes with Swift, and you can do that from the um, terminal. So if you come over to say and just open up a Mac terminal like I have here, and you type Swift, okay, you're going to enter into a, um, a basically an interpreter. Now again, Swift is a compiled language, and it is efficient in the way it's compiled, but this REPL kind of gives you the feel of say a, a dynamic language like Python, um, where I can create a variable, you know, x. You know, equals something. It'll tell me, you know, there's the X, and it gives me the type. Notice that it's type strict and given a particular type, and I can do some sort of uh, manipulation on it. Um, let's print it out, and we'll print out not just X, but say X uh, times X, which is then going to be the result of the expression, which is 100. Okay, and you pretty much anything you can do in um, in Swift in a Swift program, you can do in the REPL. Now, how do you get out of the REPL? Well, just like most of them, um, it's the end of file marker, and so like a Control D. Um, can exit you out of the REPL makes it pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, just to show you a quick little example, and again, we'll cover each of these topics um, uh, in more detail to specific, but just kind of give you a taste of what they are in the REPL. It, I can use Swift as a scripting language, so I can start and say, you know, let me create an echo uh, program. And what I'm going to do is I basically, you know, when you create a shell of some sort, you specify the shell that you want to use at the top, right? Use the hashtag bang, right, or the shebang, and then we say, you know, user, and then the um, user bin. Basically, the interpreter that I'm going to use for the particular script. So I'm going to use um, user bin Swift, and that's going to then interpret this entire file. And so I could put the same thing, or I could basically do my little echo program, and I'm going to use a if statement here, and I'll discuss in just a minute. So then we'll say if. Um, And then an else. So this is a little echo program, and um, In order for me to actually run it, I still have to make it executable. So I'm going to change the um, rights here, change mod. And now I can run this program. And this is a Swift program running. Ah, of course, if I don't uh, write it correctly, it won't. Let's have a look at there. What did I forget? Ah, I forgot a quote at the end of my string here. Let's go ahead and put that quote in there. Try it again. You must enter an argument, right? Because I didn't put the argument. And here I will go ahead and say hello. And my program will echo hello. Okay. So again, just one of the one of the tool sets that we have. We have the REPL. You can use the REPL for doing things. Um, the other one, again, like I said, mainly what we'll, we'll use here 
is the um, Xcode, right? Xcode development environment. And one of them that we can use is the playground. So I'm just going to create a playground and I can create it for iOS or for OS uh, 10. I'm just going to leave it for iOS. And that just depends on what the default import it's going to use. So I go ahead here. This is fine to create it in that directory. And this little pro this little playground here. will basically let me to kind of do the same types of things that I was doing with the REPL, um, where I was uh, basically playing around with uh, different um, aspects of the Swift language. Here's the hello uh, playground. I can say, you know, print line, the um, string, which is there. I can create a var x again, equal to 10. Same types of things I can do um, with the REPL again to play around with the different aspects of Swift. So very useful for if you want to write a particular algorithm and you want to um, you know, hash it out a little bit just in isolation, you can do that um, in uh, using a playground. Okay, so the other case, and the one that I'm gonna use mostly through the rest of this um, discussion here is an actual project. And there's many different projects you can create. And notice when you start up with Xcode, there's um, uh, a section for iOS and a section for OS 10. Uh, so I just went to file new and created a new project. And under iOS, I can have an application. Again, there's different types of applications. Um, I can create a framework or a library. Again, other as well, like an in-app purchase or an empty. I'm not going to go over any of these. These are specific to basically building those. And they could be built used using Objective-C rather than Swift as well. Here, we're going to focus on just the Swift language. So the easiest way to focus on just the Swift language is to build a command line tool because a command line tool doesn't really have anything um, a special, no type of user interface that's that's difficult to get in and out. I can just go ahead and show you the language constructs. But again, all the different types of things you can create here. Um, and again, all of these can be generated uh, using uh, Swift or Objective-C. So let's start here and let's just create our um, command line tool. And we'll just call it basic language um, webcast, All right? And notice I'm going to pick the language as Swift. Again, there's Objective-C, C++, and C. I want to use Swift as a language. If I'd finished off, I'm going to keep it in that same directory. it would be fine. And when I create this, I um, get, again, this a couple of extra things here that I don't really need. I'm going to kind of clear off that section of Xcode. Um, so that I can look at directly what I want to see. Here's the default generated um, file for me. Now, here's one of the things again about the tool set that we're looking at is that um, with say the REPL or the playground, any code you type will be immediately executed. Now, when you start with a project, there needs to be an entry point, right? So with the playground or with the REPL, there's only one file. So the entry point for the program to start executing is, is basically the top of the file. Um, with a um, project where I might have more than one file associated with it, um, code is not just immediately executed. Um, there has to be an ent entry point. And that entry point is this particular file. Notice it's called main.swift. So the main.swift file has a special meaning um, when you build an application, um, a command line application using um, Swift. And that basically is a file that can immediately execute code. Like notice this print line, hello world. If I go ahead and run this program, I'll make sure I bring this up higher so you can see it and clear off this side here. Again, it does output immediately and just executed that line of code. But if I have another file in here that does something else, um, it's not going to immediately execute that code. It's only going to execute things that are in this main. I can invoke functions from over there, which we'll look at in a minute but um, I can't just do it um, this way. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of different things. Um, again, just so we look at the Swift language, we have um, comments, right? You can have comments and the standard style is you can have the um, slash slash, which basically comments from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. We also have the multi-line comments. Um, multi-line comment of some sort. Uh, but the advantage, the kind of the difference here than most common where you've seen these multi-line comments before is that uh, multi-line comments in other languages like C and C++ cannot be nested. In Swift, they can be. 
So notice that I've basically still have, this is all correctly commented out, even though I've, I've nested the, um, the comment here. So that's just one of the, the, the extra little features of uh, Swift. Okay. All right. So I saw a couple questions here. Let me see if I can run through and answer them. Um, would there be a recording of the webinar later on? Yes, there's going to be one. Um, I'm not able to hear audio. Um, I'm hoping most other people can hear audio. Let's see. I'm not getting any sound. There's two people. Um, you need a quote on the end. Yeah, so somebody got it. They see that I did need the quote on line four. Um, hopefully, I'm sorry, uh, maybe um, Mary is, is a tech person that's, that's helping out. Hopefully, she'll be able to check with you um, and see if you can uh, get your audio working because it seems to be working for everyone else. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and move on from just this little hello world, right? What are we going to do in our, um, our, our program here? And one of the things that, that is, you know, a very common thing now is like the health apps, right? You know, doing things like, you know, counting, um, you know, lap times and, and basically averaging out lap times. And these are like standard programs, things that you might need to do. So in order to do something like that, we need to be able to have a variable, right? And in Swift, there's two types of constructs here, keywords that use to create variables. There's var, which creates a basically a variable, a type that you can actually change the value of. And then there's let, and let actually declares a constant, all right? And so I'll look at the difference of those in just a minute here. Let's go ahead and look at just the variable. I'm gonna create a variable, and this is gonna be lap um, one. So this is basically just the lap one and it's going to equal a particular time. So let's say 13.4. All right, notice when I made this declaration, I didn't specify any type. Uh, however, the type is still strictly specified for this particular variable, lap one, and it happens to be a double, which means that later on down here, I can't say lap one equals hello, equals a string. Um, the compiler notice is going to give me a compiler error because lap one is not of string type. And it tells me there at the end there, it says, you know, cannot assign type of string to a value of type double because this end up, end up having to be actually be a double. So let's see what that would look like for those of you. So this is the type inference where it's doing it automatically. For those of you who like to be um, verbose, you can actually specify that this is supposed to be a double. And you do that with simply specifying a colon after the variable, and you can have a space there too, um, a colon after the variable, and then the type that you want this to be created to. I could specify it to a different type, like a float, right? So the float type, which is a smaller type, a float um, is a 32-bit floating point, and a double is a 64-bit floating value. Um, or again, if I leave it off, it will default to double type. Now let's look at something here. Let's go ahead and create another var lap two, and let's have it equal to 13. Okay. Now, what is the type of lap two? Well, we haven't specified it. We haven't said that it. The first one was a double, but this is a literal, which is an integer literal. Notice it doesn't have a decimal point in it. So what the compiler actually infers this type to be, lap two, is to be of int. So the compiler is actually going to do this int and infer that as an int type. Now, why does this matter? Well, one of the things that's a, um, you know, significant about being type strict is that you can't mix types and operations. And if I go down here and create an average, and so what is the average going to be? So first off, the average is going to be lap one plus lap two. Of course, I'm going to, if I, I'm going to then, of course, divide that by two. However, first thing I need to do is precedence, right? This standard, standard precedence of um, mathematical operations in most languages work the same in Swift, where lap one and uh, lap two have to be added first and then divided. Otherwise, the division will occur um, before the, uh, the, uh, the addition. What's the error? So let's go back here and let's look here at the average. Let's print out average up here, print line. average go ahead and run it and the build fail what does it says could not find an overload for plus that accepts the supplied arguments and the reason why is that lap one is a double and lap two is an int 
and there is no automatic promotion of types for um, variable types in Swift. So if I want to make sure this um, works correctly, I have to either tell the compiler for sure that I'm actually creating a double value here. Let's try running it again. Okay, gives me the 13.2, or I could also specify it. Let me just comment this one, so I'll leave you the ors out here. I could also specify it by saying 13.0, right? That will also make it a double type, okay? And, or third way I could do it is, let's put this back as regular 13, so it interprets it as an int. I can basically create a double from the int doing basically what is a cast, where I kind of create the um, double type out of the integer type and I run it. Now, let's see here, I might have seen a question here. Okay, most people are getting the sound. And let's see, I have a question. Is there any technical reason to use Objective-C over, over Swift for new projects or does Swift have all the power of Objective-C? Yes, yeah, Swift is definitely has um, all of the power of Objective-C and has integration to all of the Cocoa APIs and um, all of the, um, uh, pretty much any, any legacy Objective-C code that you have, you can integrate with uh, Swift as well. Um, so again, the, the, the reason for using Objective-C over Swift is um, there, there really isn't one. Swift is going to be the better choice. Um, uh, the, the only reason would not be technical would be maybe your staff, right, is more on Objective-C than on Swift. Okay. Um, all right, so I don't see any other question. One thing that you might have noticed, somebody might have noticed or not noticed, is the two here, right? I have the literal two. Um, and the compiler is not actually complaining here that the division cannot occur between two different types, right? And the reason why is that the literal two, the compiler can actually interpret that as a double um, versus a variable two. So, and what I mean by that is if I set a var count to equal two here, and then I put the count down here, Let's try running it again. Okay. Now you notice that I do get the failure, which might have been something you might have uh, expected, is where the double and int, there is no overload that supports a double and an int because count is a variable of int type. And as I said before, there is no automatic promotion from double to int. Okay. So that's pretty, those are just kind of the, the basic rules. The things to, to remember basically about variables is that variables, you can create the, um, uh, the variables with a specific type, right? You use the colon operator and specify the type that you're going to do, or you can use the more common way to do this is using the inference, using the compiler inference by stating what it is. Um, the other um, uh, thing that you can do here is that notice that lap one and lap two don't actually need to be variable. I'm not changing the values of lap one or lap two anywhere um, in here. I'm going to put this as 2.0 so that we can have that work again. I'm not changing the values. Um, and so to be a little bit more efficient, it's actually better to specify these as constants. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out again so it's there for you later. I'll move this stuff later, let's see. Say let um, uh, lap one equals uh, this constant here. Um, let me see, I'm getting... And then of course the build succeeds here, but what this will prevent me from doing is later on saying lap one equals 12.2. Um, I'm gonna get a compiler error here because lap one is actually a constant, um, which means that it can't actually um, change um, in the uh, variable. And that's a, that's a bad error by the compiler that's just uh, actually confused. Um, I can change it to, it's, it's basically because it's a let value, it has nothing to do with the dot cannot assign let value to lap one. All right. all right, so let me copy all this stuff out of the way here. Leave it in the code so that you guys will have it in the code later, but I'm gonna put it down out of our way so we don't have to look at it. I 
and come back up here. Now, of course, um, with the variables, so just so just so we can get in a, a kind of an exhaustive list of the types, there are there's int, right? That's going to be the standard type. Notice there's also int 16, which would be a um, two-byte integer, right? So it only holds um, values from zero to from um, negative um, 32,000 to positive 32,000. Um, there's also the, the change of, of a u int, so an unsigned int. If I come down and change this to a u int, uh, notice we have the u int type, which is the unsigned type, and that means that there are no negative values, but they only go to positive values. And again, there's 16, there's 32, and there's 64. The standard one, so the int, um, is going to be, depending on your system, usually a 64-bit system, standard int is going to be int 64. On my system, it's int 64, but it could possibly be int 32. If you want to be specific about the type, then you can. Again, the double types, there's a double, and the other change is the float. Uh, the float types have the 32-bit, a 64-bit, which is a double, and then an 80-bit, which is a larger uh, floating point type if you need that larger floating point type. There's a couple of other base types that exist that I want to talk about. There's bool. Um, bool is true or false, can only be true or false. And there is string, right, which is also a built-in um, type for, um, for Swift uh, code is the string type. Okay? All right. So let's look over here. Let's get rid of the NS string. That's again, Cocoa API stuff that we're pulling in. So we did the overview of the tool set. We've um, worked with uh, variables of different types. Uh, let's go ahead and look at arrays real quick, and then we'll look at um, ifs and loops and what are the different types of ifs and loops that exist in Swift. So an array. So the way arrays are defined, again, start with the variable keyword. We're going to say var or let if we're going to make it constant. Um, I'm going to call this um, array here, ARR. What am I going to have it be equal to? So I have to specify the type. If I just said, um, if, if I um, just specified, if I just want to create the type for it, if I just say int, that means that, of course, R is just going to be of integer type. I want to make it an array. Um, and the syntax you use that is you use the square brackets here and then the type that the array is going to hold. Uh, the type that the array is going to hold, remember arrays are um, homogeneous and they're homogeneous in Swift as well, meaning they can only have one particular type. Now we can talk about you know class types and different reference types that can refer to different things, um, but the type itself as far as the array is concerned is homogeneous. It only holds one particular type. So in this case, I've created an array of type int and I can initialize it to a bunch of different values. And notice it allows, um, the, the compiler allows the trailing comma, so I can have that or not have it um, when I'm initializing arrays. And then the array itself carries around information, uh, basically things like um, how long it is, um, what its first element is, what its last element is, and allows for it to be um, iterated over um, in, in different types of loops. So example here, let's go back to our, let's say, lap times. And let's not specify the type because again, we can get the inference. Now, if I created this array like this, I would get an array of integers, just like I was specifying the type. But if I want an array of doubles, then I need to put in double values. Point 0.5, point 0.3. Now the type of this array, lap times, is going to be an array of doubles. One of the things I might want to do is, again, compute the average of the lap times. But in this case, um, since I don't necessarily know how long the array is going to be, I might want to loop over it. And several different types of loops in um, Swift, there's the while, there's the do while, and there is so do while and there's the most common one that we'll use um, is the for okay, but let's just look at again they're going to be standard same type of construct as in most other languages um, just a few little differences so let's start with the while so let's create another a var which represents my index and arrays in swift are zero indexed so the first element is going to be at, at zero and i'm going to say while um, i is less than is less than um, count of lap times. So again, the array itself 
carries around how many elements there happen to be in it. Now, a couple things to notice about this um, syntactically in Swift is that I don't need parentheses around this. I can have them, but they are considered redundant and most of your Swift code will not have these um, types of parentheses. So I'm going to get rid of these parentheses, don't have them. The other thing you'll notice quite a bit is that I don't have use of semicolons. Right? I'm not putting semicolons in here. Again, something you can do, right? I can have a semicolon there if I want, but standard Swift programming, you usually do not have um, semicolons here. So while I uh, lap counts, I'm going to have create also my var average, or I'll, I'll do sum first and then I'll calculate the average. Start with sum equals zero. Um, we need to do what? Sum equals 0.0. .0. Otherwise, um, sum is going to be of type integer, and it'll have I'll have problems when I try to add these things to it. So sum plus equal. So again, standard um, assignment operators exist in Swift. Uh, plus equal, and then the lap times and access the element using um, using i. Okay. See if I see a, I have another question here. So I'll check it real quick. All right, this is a good question. It says, if you declare an array with the keyword let, can you change the values in the array? Okay, I'm going to um, go ahead and do that in just a minute. And the answer is no, because once the array itself is constant, you can't change the um, values either. It makes the entire array constant. A um, little bit different than if you're used to using things like um, NS array or NS mutable array. Uh, they don't work um, exactly the same. All right, so let's go ahead and actually, so let's just change this to let because I don't actually need it to be different. This is my can data here because I'm only extracting the values. Um, just so we can see if I tried to set this lap times um, sub zero equal to 12.4, let's say. All right. We notice we get this error here that cannot assign to the result of this expression. If I change that back to var, right, this should clear up the, the, the error is gone there. Okay. All right. So yeah, so the question is, yeah, let, once you have let, you cannot um, assign even to the values of the array, change the values of the array elements. All right. So the sum, I'm going to calculate the sum here. This should add up the sum. And then when I'm done there, I can go ahead and calculate my average. Actually, we'll just print out the average print, print line, um, sum divided by lap times count. Now let's see what happens here. If we try to just run this, I'll stop this one from running. Okay, notice again, we get that problem that the count happens to be an integer. Again, there's no automatic promotion. Sum happens to be a double, so. If I run that, hopefully I get my output, but I'm not seeing my output. I'm not exiting my loop. My loop's going infinitely, it hasn't stopped, right? This is a good reason why we don't use while loops, right? So I have to say I plus plus, which is going to increment my I and get me up to the counts. And there's my result. Okay. A third. All right. So again, we did this while loop, the difference um, in a while loop and a do while is that the do will always execute, right? And we've seen this before standard, same as most other languages do while count. Um, this one will run, give me, um, same answer here. Uh, neat thing about this is that, um, there must be a actual block after the loop. You cannot execute a single statement. So if I tried to just do a while, um, if I just tried to do one single statement after this, or even put a semicolon after it, switch it back here. Uh, if I accidentally did that, put a semicolon, some other languages allow this to occur, which means that it's executing the next statement, which is nothing. Um, safety in Swift does not allow that to happen. Uh, you cannot have just a single statement after a while. You have to actually have the brackets. So these are required. Like I said, the parentheses are optional. 
but the um, brackets are actually required um, when dealing with loops. Okay, and that's actually with any of these control constructs, the brackets are required. So let's again, let's say, let's test here and say, let's use a conditional statement like if, and let's say if, um, let's change this back to the average var average equals, and then let's say sum or average if average is greater than or less than say 14.0 then we can print out keep up the good work and an if statement in following the same rules syntactically this has to be a boolean condition it can have parentheses if you want um, but they are not required. The brackets are required here. You cannot just have, I cannot have this free floating. I could not just have this as a single statement following. And compiler is not going to um, compile the code for me here, right? It has to have a bracket. And that's again the safety for issue. You must have um, bracket your code so that the block is specified. And I can also have an else clause here. Print line. You need to work harder. You know, something to that effect. All right. So again, keeping up if the um, if they're not getting the speeds on their lap counts, we'll do something different. Okay. All right. So if splits these things while loop. Um, again, what I said is the loop um, standard loop is um, the, the 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 while loop exists, the do loop exists. And they're useful in, in, in several different types of cases, but the more common loop that you'll see and use, um, I'm going to go ahead and move this loop down here again somewhere. You guys have it, but um, is the for loop. So let's use a for and several different ways that you can create a for uh, in uh, Swift. Again, we don't need the parentheses, right? We could have the parentheses, but parentheses are not necessary. And in standard Swift programming, you don't use parentheses. Uh, for the uh, control constructs. So I'm going to say for, uh, you can do it like most familiar for statements are um, that use indices. We could do something like, um, you know, uh, have the three constructs in there. So like the initialization, the test, and then the increment. But the more standard one is to use the for in, right? And that works like this. You basically specify a, a, a variable that you're going to use, val, in, and then lap times. And then my open and close, and then I can do my sum plus equal val, right? And this for loop is basically just does it and iterates over every element in this particular collection until it gets to the end. So we go ahead and run that. Um, and of course it ran, give me the keep up good work because my average is good. If I bump my average um, down, see if that'll be enough to get it over. Um, you got to put a comma there, not a, a comma. Run that one. Okay. Yep. Need to work harder because my average didn't end up being below 14. Okay. All right. So let's go back and check where our status and what we're doing. So we've instantiated arrays. We've done something more than once with loops. We've branched the code with if statements. Let's have a little bit of a look at the um, switch statement again, because a switch statement is going to add a lot of um, functionality to what we do when we conditionally branch code. So to start with that, I'm going to go ahead and move. I'm going to keep lap times because I, well, actually I'm going to keep that array. Wait, actually, no, let's do this. Let's take all this out and we'll start. Let me move this stuff down as well. And we'll comment it out so that it doesn't run through here. And we'll start by how to invoke a function. Now we've already invoked a function using the print line or use the print line function, but I'm going to put in one of my own functions here. Let's go ahead and add a file to this um, construct here. I have this little util uh, Swift and I'm going to add that over there. Uh, and this is now part of my project. Now I'm not going to go over all these things. This is kind of an ugly way of how I get the information from the um, console so I can use user input here. Um, let's go back to the main Swift and um, 
we can use that function um, by simply invoking it. And that one happens to be um, prompt for input. And what I could do is let's say I want to get uh, somebody's uh, age. Let's say um, I'm going to, I'm going to input somebody's age. I can say var age equals prompt for input. And then again, the parameter that I'm going to pass in there is going to be a string. And I'm going to say, please, please enter your age. Okay. And then we're going to stop We're going to say, just print it out right now. Print line, uh, you are, uh, and I'm going to use something called string interpolation. Just another little feature that we can use, um, as we um, do like quick and dirty type of, uh, formatting, uh, into a string as I can basically specify a backslash and then open parentheses and put the actual variable that I want to um, put into the string inside it. Uh, years young, All right? So let's go ahead and run this. We run it it says, please enter your age. And we'll say 25 because that's the eternal youth, right? You are 25 years young. Now, what did we notice? A couple things is what is the type of age? Well, the prompt for input returns a string, right? When we get the string value in, you get a string value back. I want to have a numeric value for this. And so what am I going to do? Let's see. I have a question here. Let me just check the question here. Uh, um, I don't see the new question. I think everything else is there. Okay. All right. Um, so this is going to be a string and notice also the string that came back. What did I get? I also got the carriage return here, the line feed, because it says you are 25 and then carriage return and then years young. One of the things I want to do is I want to convert it to a number and Swift allows us to do, um, four, um, simple types, basically converting a string into an int. We can do that really easy just with the string type itself. So I can just say var, um, let's say this is, we'll make this the, um, input and then we'll say the var uh, age equals input dot um, to int. Okay. Now let's try printing this again. Let's run this again. It gives me the int. Enter my age. I'll say 25 again. And interesting. What is that? Okay. You are nil years young. Well, when we convert this, right, convert this value and let's do, let's just put the string value here that we're looking at and we'll comment out this. Let's make this 25. Then when we put the string value in there and we run it, we notice that this could be this, this is strange, right? That shouldn't be able to interpret this part. If I cut this part off, right? Run the 25. I actually get the value. Well, this brings us to the idea of an optional type, right? Is that the string that I read in, right? When I was reading in the age here came with some extra thing. It's it's, if we look at this um, straightforward as a string, it's very easy to convert that to an integer and we can say, okay, that's going to be an integer. Um, but the problem is what happens if, you know, we put in cat, right? We can't do that. Or, or even just the, what I had there, you know, 25, um, backslash in. Right, the same type of problem here is that these extra characters cannot actually be converted into an integer. So we can't just return a regular integer from this um, function that the string is parsing here. We have to return back an optional and the optional tells us whether this integer um, was actually successful in converting or it wasn't. Now there are in say Coco APIs and NS string, there's lots of different ways of doing conversions and we can actually, and actually NS number formatter allows us to do a lot of these conversions from other things um, and converts and passes us back these optional integers. But how do I know then before I print out, if I wanted to use the age, say in a switch statement, right? We're going to be looking at a switch statement here. If I wanted to use the age in a switch statement, how would I know for sure that I got an integer and didn't get that nil? Well, there's a special syntax in, um, in Swift for handling optional types where instead of doing, you could do this. I could say if age, uh, not equal nil, right? So now I know that it actually did get convert to, to a, to a value. Then I could try and unwrap the value in the optional. 
notice in my output it says optional 25, right? And what I really want is just printed out just plain 25, right? I can take this in here and say, move this over to here. I can do what's called a force unwrap. And that's what that explanation point is at the end there. That forces the, um, the, the optional value to be unwrapped to its underlying type. So I'll go ahead and run it again. And build succeeded and I, the optional is nil, right? I didn't put an else clause in here. Let's put an else, else um, print line. Uh, could not parse an int, All right? I'll run it again. Build succeeded. This time we get the could not parse an int. If I put this back to 25 and run it, then notice I get the you are 25 years young and I've taken off the optional um, portion of that. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, the other syntax here that we can do, so instead of doing this type of check, we don't want to always have to check for nil here and then, and then do the unwrap, right? This can get very cumbersome, especially if we do this multiple, multiple times in, um, in Swift, there's also the syntax called the let age, let's say, let a equal, um, age. Okay. And then I'm not going to unwrap the force unwrap because a is going to already be forced unwrapped. What this syntax does is it does the check for nil and then does the unwrapping for you. And there's no reason for you to do the unwrapping or anything else if you don't, um, if, if it, if it doesn't work. So I can basically do an if let and that if let syntax again, gives me the same type of behavior. If I change this back to cat, um, again, could not parse. Um, the integer is going to work. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to use that if let syntax in order for me to um, do my switches now. So let's go ahead and move. I'll just, use, I'll just put it in here in this code. We'll kind of comment out this section. Let's say if we're here, we want to do multiple things and just print how old you are, we can use a switch. Right. And what am I going to switch on? I'm going to switch on a, which is an integer, right? Now, if I switch on a, we can use cases case, uh, one, um, print line, happy first B day. Okay. Um, case 10 print line. Welcome to double digits, um, case 13, do a uh, OTIN, okay, and then case 25 good age to be. Now, some of you might be noticing, some of you that are familiar with switch statements might be noticing a couple different things here. First off, in most languages with switch statements, if I ran this code like it is, and the value of the case of a was one, I would get happy first birthday, welcome to double digits, and then, um, uh, -oh, teen, and then good age to be. And that's because most, um, uh, switch statements require you to add break, right? If you want to break out of the, um, switch statement in Swift, the default case is broken out of. So the code is executed here and then the default case is broken out of. So if I run, tried to run this right now, it would actually just print out happy first birthday. Now Swift is also being safe with its switch statements 
And in that case is the valid range of integers. Again, this is a 64 bit integer is like, uh, you know, you know, it holds 18 exabytes. So it's minus, you know, nine exabytes to positive nine exabytes. Uh, that's a lot bigger than just one, 10, 13, and 25. So Swift forces the compiler, this is error down here, is Swift is going to force me to make sure that the switch statement is exhaustive, meaning that I cover all the cases. And in order to do that, I couldn't actually type out every single case. I have to do something like um, uh, put a default. So something that's going to give the um, rest of the cases a, a fill. So now my switch will, will run, and again, it'll break correctly. So if I run through here, I should get the happy first birthday. But what if I wanted to say, um, you know, ha happy, you know, just happy birthday for, you know, everybody from two to four, you know, You know, just for the for the for the two to four, I just want to say happy fun birthday. Well, I could write say case one, case two, happy fun birthday, case three, case four. It doesn't work as it would might in another in um, uh, other languages, right? I could do it like this. The problem with this and the reason this doesn't work is because the default case is a break, right? So in uh, Swift, I would have to use this keyword if I wanted to specify my, my switch statement like this. However, this isn't the best way to specify your switch statement in Swift. The fall through is kind of like a fallback um, if you need to have fall through um, syntax because you're porting code. For Swift, normally what we would do to handle all these cases is just specify them all. all right, so the cases are two, three, and four. I'm going to give you that uh, message there, okay? run them and then let's change this so we hit one of those cases it's at three and run it and there we have fun birthday okay so any of those the other thing you can do in swift with switch statements is use ranges so here i could say dot dot less than say 20 that would give me the ranges between um, 13 and 19 or i can put dot 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 19 and that gives me um, all the values there. Okay. All right, let's give a 17th birthday and see if we get a 18. And yeah, we do. All right, I see that I'm getting close to my time limit here. So I did want to cover one other thing on functions before we, before we move on out. And then I'll answer any questions that I can. So first thing here is with a function, uh, if I want to move, say, these particular operations, or, or even my, let's say my, I'll take my um, average uh, function or my sum function. I'm going to create a function that'll do a sum of, of an array. Uh, I specify that using the func keyword. I specify its name, so uh, sum. And then I specify the parameters. And the parameters all have uh, names, like the parameter list has to have um, names or associated with. So I'm going to say, um, this is the array. Uh, again, we use the colon here to specify the type of the parameter. So this is going to be an array of ints, right? So I'm going to have an array of ints for summarizing. And then after I specify the parameter list, I need to specify the return type. So I specify the return type with an arrow. And then this is just going to be an integer return type. A single value integer is the return type. I'm going to put in my loop, which is basically oh, I'm going to create my um, s as the uh, value started at zero. I'm going to create my loop for val in array and then s plus equal, which is just the operation I had of val. And then at the end, I can return, return my um, resultant sum here, the s value. Okay. Uh, in order to execute the function down here, I can create a new array. So val a equals
and then I can get the sum of it. Var s equals sum, uh, sum. And notice that the IntelliSense works right away for my sum that I'm passing there. Um, so I just hit tab and I pass in the value of a, and then that um, will return that value and I can print it out. So print line s and let's run it. And that's the sum of those values. Okay. Uh, just the, 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 just real quick again, just on the um, note on these parameters, um, and I'll talk more about them in the intermediate um, Swift uh, webcast, but these are um, implicit parameters by default for bare functions like this, which means that notice I just pass the argument without specifying the name of the argument. Um, with functions in Swift, we can actually specify the um, names of the arguments as well. Okay, let me, I got five minutes. Let me look through here and see if I have um, some questions that I can um, answer that I might have missed. Um, still have something. What type is A? Okay, I did have that one, sorry. That was back up here when we were doing the switch of A. Um, A is of type int because the optional type, the input to int here, this returned an optional int. Um, so the underlying type, whatever the underlying type of the optional is, like if I created an optional type, say a var um, s equals, or then we even specify it as an optional string. And the way I can specify it as an optional string is with that question mark. Um, I can give it a value. Let's see if I don't give it any value. Let's print line um, s. Oh, you're going to have two s's here. Let me just call it str. Um, str. All right. And let's run that. Okay. Notice I get the nil uh, because the string is an optional type and it's just initialized to a nil if it has no value. If I then extract the value using the let syntax, if let um, uh, val equal um, stir, which is the optional string, then I can um, print what the string is or val, which the actual string is. And I'm going to give this an actual value this time. So um, let's give it a value here. str equals low. Set its value. So it runs here. Yeah. And, and let me print out the string as well below the string hello here so that we can see it running this one. You see. So when you see this part down here where it says optional hello, the underlying type, when you do a let and if let, it comes out as the actual type because it only shows up if it can be unwrapped. Right. Okay. All right. Well, um, that is the uh, end of time. Looks like we're right up on noon. Um, if there are no other questions, uh, again, I have in the chat, if you check in the chat, there is a link to a GitHub uh, account, and I will go ahead and copy up um, the examples here, this uh, main uh, Swift file and the util Swift file um, up for you to, um, to get at if you'd like. Um, okay. All right. Thank you guys, and uh, we will talk to you later.